Hello there, and welcome to this collection of notebooks and tutorials on audio coding. This is a course offered by Professor Shula at the Humanal University of Technology. I am Renato, the instructor for these online materials, and on this tutorial, we will talk about the PQMF filter bank used in MPEG-1 and MPEG-2 backwards compatible audio. So here we have a block diagram of the basic paradigm of time frequency domain audio coding. We start with uh, our digital audio input, then we have two sections. First, uh, it goes to a filter bank and also it goes to a psychoacoustic model. Then the output of the psychoacoustic model and the output of the filter bank, they goes to a beat or noise allocation. And then it also goes to the bit string formatting, and then the output would be the encoded bit string. The definition of a complete transmission chain consists of the specification of an encoding algorithm, the bit string format, and the decoding algorithm. And we have for many years two different approaches. We had the ITUT approach, and the ITUT standardizes all the three parts. So the um, encoder output is predictable. And also we have the MPEG approach. And the MPEG standardizes only the bitstream format and the decoder, not the encoder, the informative part. The motivation behind this is to be open for further improvements and room for specific corporate know-how. However, there is no sound quality guaranteed. The MPEG-1 audio consists of uh, audio coding from 32 to 48 kilohertz, mono or stereo. It has three layers, layer one, layer two, and layer three, where layer three, that's also known as MP3, is optimized for lower bit rates. And the MPEG-1 audio also includes a copy protection via a serial copy management system, uh, CSCMS. And the MPEG-2 audio has low sampling frequencies of audio added uh, from 16 to 24 kilohertz to layers 1, 2, and 3. It has multi-channel audio and it's backward compatible. So the MPEG-1 audio was developed uh, from uh, December of 88 to November of 92 and it uh, deals with the coding of mono and stereo signals using bit rates from 32 kilobits per second to 448 kilobits per second. And it has three layers. Layer 1 with the lowest complexity, layer 2 with increased complexity and quality, and layer 3 with the highest complexity and quality at low bit rates. It supports the sampling frequencies of 48 kHz, 44.1 kHz, and 32 kHz. So the um, MPEG-1 audio has some building blocks, and the main building blocks are the perceptual model that uses psychoacoustics and is mostly proprietary. Then it has the filter bank block that um, is subdivided the input signal into spectral components where more lines implies in more coding gain and longer impulse response implies in pre echo artifacts. And also there's the quantization encoding block and this is the step introducing quantization noise where the spectral shape of quantization noise determines the audibility and it can be designed to leave encoding methods optional. I'll give a short description of the layers of the MPEG audio. So layer 1 uses a frame length of 384 samples, that is 8 milliseconds at 48 kilohertz. It has the frequency resolution of 32 subbands from a P QMF filter bank, and it uses block compending quantization using 12 samples, and the amplitude of subband samples is indicated by scale factors, SCF. Layer 2 has a frame length of 1152 samples, and that is 24 milliseconds at 48 kHz. It also has a frequency resolution of 32 subbands from a PQMF filter bank. It also uses the quantization of block compending using 12 samples and it also uses uh, the scale factor select information. Then we reach the layer 3. 
that has a standard frame length of 1,152 samples, also 24 milliseconds at 48 kilohertz, and has different frequency resolutions. It can be 576 or 192 subbands from a two-stage filter bank. So we have a 32-band PQMF filter bank in the first stage, followed by a 6 or an 18 band MDCT in each of the 32 PQMF subbands. Hence, we have uh, 326 and 192 or 3,218, 576 in the second stage. So depending if we use the 576 subbands or 192 subbands. Uh, it uses the non-uniform uh, quantization with Huffman coding and also use scale factor select information. Here is the block diagram for the MPEG-1 layer 1 and here we see the filter banks of um, 32 subbands. Here is our digital audio signal in PCM format. Here we have a FFT of 512 points just before the psychoacoustic model. We have the extraction of the scale factors. Here we have the dynamic bit allocation, linear quantizer, and here the bit stream formatting. And then we have our coded audio bit stream. So just remember that the layer one has just these 32 subbands from the PQMF filter bank. On the layer three, then we have two stages, and the first stage is the 32 subbands, a PQMF filter bank, and the second stage has one MDCT filter bank for each of the 32 subbands of the first stage, and it can be, for example, from 0 to 575 if we use the 500. Uh, and 76 subbands, or it could be 192 subbands. And here we also see that now we have 1024 FFT points for just before the psychoacoustic models. And we have here a distortion control loop with non uniform quantization rate control loop. We have the Huffman encoding, and then we would have our coded audio signal.